Hello everyone, this video continues our series on user interface design. Specifically, this video talks about navigation design. The learning objectives for this video are as follows. After watching, students should be able to understand key principles and best practices for designing a usable navigation mechanism in the user interface. If you remember from a previous video, the user interface consists of three separate components. The navigation mechanism, the input mechanism, and the output mechanism. This video focuses on the navigation mechanism, that is, the way that users tell the system what to do. The first principle of navigation design is that you need to assume that users have not read the manual, have not attended any training, and do not have any external help readily at hand. This is the worst case scenario, but is actually probably the most common scenario. Most people don't want to spend a lot of time attending trainings or reading manuals before they sit down and actually use the computer system that they need to use. One time a relative asked me to help them set up their new iPod, and when I pulled out the manual to start reading the instructions, they almost had an anxiety attack because they didn't think that someone should actually need to read instructions before using a computer system. In other words, all controls should be clear and understandable and placed in an intuitive location on the screen. Otherwise, your users will get very frustrated. You should try to prevent mistakes as much as possible by limiting choices and choosing not to display commands that can't be used. For example, gray them out, like in this example here. If there's nothing selected to be cut or copied, then those options are grayed out in this system. You can also confirm actions that are difficult or impossible to undo. To keep your user happy, give them confirmation screens or ask them if they really want to do what they're about to do. For example, when you close Microsoft Word, it asks you if you want to save the document that you've been working on. Beyond trying to prevent mistakes, you should also try to simplify recovery from those mistakes. In a lot of systems, an undo option is provided to the user. Another way to make the navigation of the system easier to understand is to use consistent grammar order, either action object or object action. Most systems use object action navigation order, meaning that you select the object and then you select the action that the system should perform on it. For example, when you want to delete a file off of your desktop, you select the object first, the file, and then you select the action, delete. Again, here's a good example of a confirmation. Are you sure you want to move this file to the recycling bin? No, I don't think I am. Here's another example. In Microsoft Word, if you want to manipulate the text, you choose the object or the text first, and then you choose the action that you want to perform on it, such as make it bold, or underline it, or even highlight it. However, Microsoft also includes some options that use the opposite grammar order. For example, you can select highlight, that's the action, and then you select the object that you want to highlight. It's better to be consistent in the grammar order. And most systems use object action order anyways. Here are some tips for creating menus that are easy to navigate. Menus enable users to select an action from an organized display of categories and options. Broad and shallow design is preferred over narrow and deep. What that means is it's better to have a menu with a lot of options on it and not a lot of submenus that go several levels deep. Avoid submenus within submenus within submenus. Use logical categories that will make sense to the users, for example, customers and orders. Or you can use actions like insert and design. Again, be consistent with predefined standards. Most systems these days have a file menu, edit menu, help menu, and so on. Of course, with the increasing popularity of mobile devices and touchscreens, menus may become less and less popular. The Microsoft Office Suite has already done away with their menus and has for several years. Here's an example. QuickBooks has great menus. They are broad and shallow and they're well organized. They organize their menus by people or organizations that the company might interact with. For example, customers, vendors, employees, and banking are all separate menus. This is a great menu layout. Here on the side you can see I put a, a poor alternative of what a menu could have looked like. Instead of having a nice broad and shallow menu here, they could have made the customer menu more narrow and deep with a customer center option, a document submenu to get to invoices and sales receipts, and a charges submenu to then get to the statement submenu to then get to the option to enter statement charges and create statements. In this alternative, people would have to go searching through a lot of submenus to find what they're looking for. However, in the real good example, QuickBooks doesn't use a lot of submenus. 
which means they have a lot of options on a single menu, but they organize them very well and put these separators in between the options. Messages are something that we already mentioned that are important to help navigate a system. Some common message types include error messages, confirmation messages, acknowledgement messages, delay messages. These are the messages that users see when there is some delay. For example, when you're downloading something that's taking a long time, you might see a percentage downloaded. When Windows is waiting to do something, you see that the icon changes to a blue circle. There are also help messages. All of these are helpful in aiding the user to better navigate your system. Strive for clear, concise, and complete messages, the three C's. You should be grammatically correct and free of jargon and abbreviations, unless they are the user's common abbreviations. Finally, avoid, avoid negatives and humor because these things can get old. Here are some examples of some terrible error messages. This is bad humor that would get old really fast. You don't really need an error that says no error occurred. Question or information that needs the user's immediate attention does not seem like a yes or no question. Further, what's the difference between no and cancel? In this error, it's telling us that an unknown error occurred. In a lot of these cases, the message isn't useful at all, and it would be better not to have the message in the first place. These are just a few of the tips and best practices that you should follow to help a user have a good experience in navigating through your system.